If you haven't done so yet, pause the video and try to answer the question first before listening on. Our first step in the question is to determine the limiting reagent. And to find the limiting reagent, what we do is divide the moles of each reactant by the coefficient in the balanced reaction. The coefficient would be these numbers that are in front of the reactants in the chemical equation. So let's begin with the first reactant where we have 150 grams of chlorine dioxide. And what we're going to do is convert that into moles. So we know that one mole of chlorine dioxide would be its mass from the periodic table. So you want to pause the video, grab your periodic table, and add the masses of a chlorine and two oxygens together. And when you do that, you should get about 67.5 grams. And the grams of chlorine dioxide will cancel out. And then we're going to make sure that we divide these moles of chlorine dioxide by the coefficient. Now the coefficient of chlorine dioxide is a two, so we would divide this result by two. And when we do that, we get about 1.11 moles for the chlorine dioxide. Now we're going to do a similar process for the other reactant, the sodium hydroxide, and here we're starting out with 500 milliliters of that sodium hydroxide. And of course we know that one liter is equal to 1000 milliliters, and that's going to cancel out the mills. And then we also know from this molarity that there are 4.84 moles of the sodium hydroxide in one liter. So this would cancel out the liters, leaving us with moles, and then again we want to divide by the coefficient. Now the coefficient for sodium hydroxide is also a 2. And when you work that out you're going to get 1.21 for the sodium hydroxide. Now the trick here is to pick the reactant that had the fewest number of moles in this little calculation, and so we can see that that turns out to be the chlorine dioxide. Therefore, that is the limiting reagent, and we can move on to step two. And in this step, we're going to begin with the given amount of the limiting reagent and calculate the grams of each product. Remember, the limiting reagent was the chlorine dioxide. So let's begin with the 150 grams of chlorine dioxide. We're going to convert that into moles of chlorine dioxide by remembering that one mole was equal to about 67.5 grams. And so that'll cancel the grams of chlorine dioxide. We next look at the reaction and we can see that two moles of chlorine dioxide will produce one mole of NaClO2, which is sodium chloride. So we would write that into our conversion here. We have two moles of ClO2 will produce one mole of NaClO2. And then we can see that the moles of chlorine dioxide will cancel. And then we just have to convert the moles of sodium chloride into grams of sodium chloride. So we pick up our periodic table again and we look up the mass of one mole of NaClO2. And we can see that that's about 90.5 grams. And so the moles will cancel out. We can pick up our calculators and run this through it. And when we do that, we get about 101 grams of sodium chloride. And so now we're going to run a similar calculation, but this time we're figuring out the grams of NaClO3. So we'll begin with the limiting reagent, 150 grams of ClO2. We'll convert that into moles of ClO2. We then look at the reaction, and we can see that two moles of ClO2 produce one mole of sodium chlorate. The moles of the ClO2 will cancel out, and then we just have to convert the moles of sodium chlorate into grams of sodium chlorate. So once again, you're going to want to pick up your periodic table and look up the mass in grams of an Na, a Cl, and three oxygens this time. And that mass turns out to be about 106.5. So these moles will cancel out. You pick up your calculator and you run this through it, and you should get about 118 grams of the sodium chlorate. And so now we have the maximum mass of each product that could be formed. 